hindrance come out of fetters. So long as fetters are there, you have to expect hindrances. Uh, aversion is temporary thing. Ill will is a fetter. So we change the names for them to denote the difference between these two, the impact. Are the fetters closer to the surface harder to get rid of or something? Uh, no, no, no. No, 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 actually no, no, no. Okay. These, are, these are not uh, arranged in any particular uh, order, order of the intensity or strength. Uh, but the names are different from them because of the uh, strength. You see, here we have sense desire. This is craving for fine material, craving. You see, craving. These can be anusayas, fetters can be anusayas. Yes, this. Yeah, anusaya, uh, only very few are mentioned. Raga anusaya, uh, patiga anusaya, uh, ditta anusaya, avidya anusaya. But you know, so long as you have raga anusaya, avidya anusaya, anything else can happen there. <laughs> These are the root uh, defilements. Now, every time we meditate, concentrate, we manage to get rid of these things. And mind remains calm at that time. But once you come out of meditation, concentration, they grow again. So, vipassana meditators uproot them. See, this is what we person meditators do. <laughs> See, both hands, two hands, meaning samatha vipassana. Here, vipassana, samatha hand, this is vipassana hand. Both <laughs> hold the plant and uproot it. I was going to show this later on to go through this very slowly, but let me finish uh, what uh, we started. Okay? <coughs> Uh, so then, uh, then what happens? This is where fourfold effort comes in with mindful reflection. Uh, You, rem you remember those three cardinal factors of the Noble Eightfold Path? They apply here. First, you recognize the particular uh, fetter and you understand. It is called understands. Understands the eye, understands the visual objects and understands the fetter arising. This is where your understanding comes in. Then you have your effort. Effort to arouse 
mindfulness. And then use that mindfulness to make mindful reflection with effort. So, in addition to uh, uh, knowing, becoming aware of it, we have to follow few other steps like following those uh, five uh, using uh, mindfulness reflection and then uh, making effort with mindfulness to uh, overcome that that is how it goes away when it goes away then use the same mindful reflection effort to maintain that state this is what is said here he understands how he how to give up an arisen fetter how to give up it is not just letting it go how to give up how is mindful reflection how is mindful effort and how is understand we have to apply these three we understand pleasure danger degradation defilements and then let it go how to give up understanding the benefit of renunciation here I use the word renunciation because we renounce this desire for sensual pleasure. Giving up is renunciation. Fetters have to be renounced. <coughs> Hindrances you temporarily can, you know, put in a shell, saying you boy go away and you play with other toys, don't bother me now I am in very busy serious business, I will come back to you though, don't bother me right now. You can lull and cheat and you know send him away temporarily. That is what we call, what we do with hindrances. But with fetters you cannot do that. You got to deal with them very thoroughly very as, a, as an adult, as a matured enemy. Yeah. Vimuti, Vimuti would apply to hindrances. Vimuti will apply to fetters. Fetters. Now, even t for temporary fading away, disappearance can also be called Vimuti. That is temporary. For instance, in Anapana Satisutta, you say last tetrad says uh, anichanupasi, viraganupasi, nirodhanupasi, patnisagganupasi. Anichanupasi, you breathe in and out, seeing impermanence. Then you breathe in and out, seeing non attachment, viraga, non clinging to it. You breathe in and out, uh, nirodha, cessation ceasing that particular mental state and then you keep breathing in and out uh, abandoning that from your mind from that moment so that is a temporary thing each time it arrives we go through these four stages uh, here when fetters arise uh, you have to deal with more deeply with uh, great involvement and also they may you know shy away they may uh, temporarily go away but the method you apply to get rid of fetters have to be repeated with vigor courage effort mindfulness reflection it's not as 
simple as hindrances. Effort, mindful reflection, you first understand and then use these three mindful reflection, effort and understanding to get rid of them. Every time, it, not only sitting meditation, every time it arises, you apply these methods, at that time it fades away. You keep repeating it again and again and again, then you will see one day it will not arise in your mind. In sitting meditation you become aware of it, you become mindful of it, that alone is not enough. You got to use mindful reflection. Mindful reflection is uh, uh, actively working uh, the way to get rid of it. You may say willpower because uh, will also is a part of effort. It is called uh, uh, chand, chandang janeti, chand means will. Chandang janeti, vayamiti, viryang arabati, chittam pagganati, padahati. Padahana means, you know, taking a grip of it with willpower. You may use the word willpower. Any word you like to use to mean the same thing is okay. You can use any word. You don't have to uh, hang on to the words that we mentioned. Uh, whatever words you use, you can use, but the meaning should be the same thing. I'm not always clear about where skillful effort ends and unskillful effort begins. You know, skillful effort uh, uh, is the effort uh, powered by mindfulness. Unskillful effort is the effort powered by unmindfulness. So when you uh, power uh, effort with mindfulness, you know the proportion, the amount of effort you had to make. When you make effort, you realize that you are draining your energy instead of cultivating it. You become tired. That is not right skillful energy, skillful effort. Uh, then you have to do something else to get back your strength. You have your, you know, your, your strength to come back to work. Uh, so the mindfulness uh, uh, put it on the right track. It will uh, uh, not make you too exert uh, and uh, become restless and uh, uh, full of worries and so forth. So there has to be a balance. You balance uh, your effort uh, knowing uh, uh, how much, how long you practice, you exert your mind how much, how long. Say for, uh, for instance, you practice, ap ap apply effort for 10 minutes, then you cannot go any further, you must take rest. Forget it, do something else. And when, uh, next time you come back when you are ready, you can apply effort more vigorously because you have uh, given enough fresh to your mind uh, to relax and to reflect and next time you come back with the more uh, insight. So it's balancing both and balance. Yes. So effort. Or, but both. Right. Effort, rest, effort, rest. Rest period, you mindfully reflect and uh, relax. When you reflect and relax, you will be more energetic next time to work. Yeah. Is that giving up? Is it uh, throwing the towel, so to speak? 
uh, when we use the word giving up, it can be anything. <laughs> but uh, uh, we should use even perhaps better term, uh, nissarana, abandoning. Even when we say abandoning, somebody may say, well, I was working very hard and it doesn't work, I abandon the practice. Not that kind of abandoning. We abandon that particular negative mental state. For the moment. For the moment, if possible, forever. Viraga nirodha pati nisagra. Actually, uh, these are gradual stages. First, we see impermanence. When we see impermanence, uh, we would not be very much interested in that. Whatever arises is impermanent, and therefore we are not interested in that. That is called viraga. Anicca anupasi, viraga anupasi. That means you are disengaged. First you are engaged, and then you see it is changing. No matter how long you try to engage, you cannot connect. It disappears. It pulls the rug under your feet, as I said earlier. It always betrays you. It always lets you down. So then you lose interest in it. That's called viraga. Then your, your work of giving up would be easier because you have no interest in it. Viraga. Then when you lose interest, mind is not active in getting involved in that, then it settles down. That is called nirodha, ceasing, cessation, stop. Then you say, okay. Throw away. Then it is easy to throw away. <laughs> so you cannot throw away at first. It has to be done at the end, following this gradual process. Yeah. Ah, you know, that is uh, uh, what is called, uh, uh, it even becomes vanchanika dhamma. That is, that even it uh, can camouflage, it can appear in another form. That is why uh, whenever we deal with any fetter, we go to use uh, very strong, powerful dosage of mindfulness. Not to let it escape us by camouflaging it. So that we will be, we will see the, the fetter from all di different directions. Wherever it tries to escape by becoming stronger or by changing its form, we will catch it with a strong mindfulness. Uh, so it will not become uh, uh, stronger to fight because on the mindful side there are many other factors to support mindfulness. Understanding is there to support mindfulness. Concentration is there to support mindfulness. Uh, effort is there to support mindfulness. Fetter is alone by itself. It doesn't have any support. And therefore, no matter how uh, strong it tries to be, uh, our, on our side, on the positive side, there are more force to uh, attack the fetter, particular fetter. That's also a very good method. Uh, we uh, reinforce the positive side 
uh, understanding of the fetter, uh, mindfulness of the fetter, uh, mindfulness of how it works and so forth. When we plan that kind of a strategy to f reinforce our positive side, then uh, we come back with uh, greater strength to combat the particular fetter. Particular fetter becomes even weaker. Yeah. <coughs> now we go back to our uh, text again. Uh, so how to give up? How to give up an arisen fetter? So that's what we discussed. Now, uh, the last stage is uh, he understands how the fetter he has given up does not arise again. So, you once you conquered, you got to maintain. Jitancha uh, rakke anivesanosya, that is very important thing. Jitancha rakke. Jitancha means, jita means what you have won, what you have won, the, the area you have, you know, captured. Now you go to protect it. Don't let the enemy invade it, come back again. And that again, we have to uh, maintain with effort, in, four, in the fourfold effort, the last effort is to maintain effort, maintaining effort. In the dhatu, uh, parakkama dhatu, among elements of uh, effort, I mentioned three elements of effort, Ar arambha dhatu, nikkama dhatu, parakkama dhatu. Parakkama dhatu combined with uh, element uh, with the effort of maintaining the four, four in the fourfold effort fourth effort is the effort to maintain and it is reinforced by parakrama dhatu the element of maintaining so there are two factors in effort to maintain what we have gained we have gained some ground some space some area so we have to maintain it. Again we have to maintain it through mindfulness, through understanding, through two of the fourfold efforts, last effort plus the element of effort. So we have to do a great deal of work in order to deal with the fetters. With hindrances, we don't have to do that many things. The moment you gain concentration, hindrance is gone. That's easy. But with fetters, we have to work. We have to do a lot of work. Master, knowing that how the fetter doesn't arise in the future is because is knowing that you have to reach Magga. That's the only guarantee that the fetter is not going to. Uh, now, uh, that's a good point. Does not arise again. Again, in that sitting, uh, during that attainment, it will not arise again. But the guarantee, of course, will be only when we attain the uh, full enlightenment. This whole uh, Satipatthana uh, practice is of uh, two levels. This is a preliminary level and then the other is ultimate level. Once you attain the ultimate level, what you said is very true, then it will not ar arise again. That is where we have full guarantee. But uh, uh, this is uh, a training period 
preliminary stage and during that time also there will be uh, time when it uh, will not arise for certain period of time. When it arises, we go through the same procedure again. Same thing goes with the ears. Once we know one, we can apply that to others as well. Hearing a sound, we know the uh, ear element, that is the inner part of our ear where the sound hits and vibrates. And sending the vibration to the brain to interpret the sound. That transforming mechanism inside the ear, the, it gets sound from outside, sound waves hit the eardrum and there are very tiny little fiber inside the ear which, uh, which vibrates and this vibration reaches the brain and brain also is set up with its own program to interpret what comes to the brain and then we make, we make sense out of the sound. So that mechanism inside the ear which uh, transmits this information to the brain is called ear element. And then sound is element, sadda dhatu, sota dhatu, sadda dhatu, sound element. What is sadda dhatu? Sadda dhatu also has all the eight elements there. Sound cannot be made without air, without earth element, water element, uh, heat element and uh, fire element. But those elements that make the sound also have other four elements also, derived elements. That means whatever things that makes the sound has one color, taste, smell, uh, uh, no, one rasa, ta uh, smell, taste and then nutriment in its own form. When any of these things lacking in the things that make the sound, uh, sound will have uh, uh, some defect. Anyway, when the sound is made by them, uh, then the ear becomes uh, conscious, then ear contact arises, uh, then feelings and all the ten stages follow. Yes. But if, um, could there be circumstances under which sense consciousness does not come together with the other two? Sound can pass without uh, arising ear consciousness because we don't pay attention. And that is important point also. Manasikara Sambhava Sabya Dhamma Buddha said. Now, for the whole operation for us to become aware of, attention should be there. All this whole operation is called Dhamma, phenomena. This whole phenomena, the whole phenomena become our phenomena only when we pay attention to it. If you don't pay attention to it, millions of sounds can pass, the ear consciousness don't arise because we don't pay any attention. Yeah. So once you remember those ten stages, they apply to all senses. That means these eighteen elements and these ten stages must function together for any of these things to arise.
and out of sound, out of uh, sound, a particular fetter can arise. We go through the fetters later on in detail, but uh, this is how. Yeah. They maintain uh, uh, because of the the desire rises, and desire also repeated. Uh, attention arises that is repeated. So because of the repetition of these things, the the mind is conditioned. I should say, uh, Bhavanga uh, itself uh, uh, is not something permanent, that even Bhavanga is uh, subject to change, it is changing all the time. But uh, the senses, the mind, uh, that has become uh, um, that has been conditioned through all uh, our experiences. Uh, when something happens, all the, the, the conditions triggers. Uh, so that is how they are uh, they manifest. Uh, we say they all are in our memory. Memory itself is not uh, something uh, uh, permanent. Memory is based on the physical fa factors of the uh, body, the, the brain. Uh, they change, the physical factors also change, and therefore memory also slowly fade away. But this kind of memory that is uh, uh, condition through experiences will not fade away or disappear so long as senses uh, are active. But the, when the senses become totally, senses are primarily physical, when the senses become totally, completely defunct due to various reasons, uh, sickness and so forth, then even when the senses are there, objects are there, this process will not take place. Okay, next uh, uh, smell and uh, nose in a uh, sensory uh, part in the nose inside is called nose element and then smell coming from outside is uh, smell element. Nose element of course is made up of those eight elements. Uh, eight elements are earth element, water element, air element, fire element, taste element, smell element, color element, and nutriment element. Taste, smell, color, nutriment are called derived elements. Derived from those four primary elements. Four primary elements are earth element, water element, air element, fire elements. So these eight elements are always there. In I element, these four eight elements are there. Form elements, these eight elements are there. Uh, e element, 
eight elements are there. Sound elements, eight elements are there. Nose element, eight elements are there. Smell elements, eight elements are there. So, just remember that's what happened to all elements. Now, uh, smell comes through the molecules traveling through with the help of, help of air and uh, of course they are invisible just like sound but nose is specialized in that that is why it is called faculty ear is specialized in hearing that is why it is called a faculty eyes cannot hear nose cannot hear so there is a special department hearing department <laughs> that specialized in that so when it comes it collects all this hearing information. It's uh, decibels and high pitch, uh, low pitch, uh, its quality, it's uh, you know how, um, uh, strong and sweet and all this. Similarly, smell element, uh, uh, smell uh, comes through the uh, nose. So the mindful meditator can feel the smell and knows how the smell appears and then how fetter arises depending on the smell. We will go through uh, the list of fetters and perhaps try to uh, figure out which fetter can arise at what time when these things happen. Uh, we can discuss them later on. Similarly, the body has rupa dhatu or the rupa dhatu is the most sensitive outer layer of our skin is the body element dhatu it is said the most important part of the body is our skin. <laughs> I, I don't know how true it is. Uh, modern I, modern uh, biologists uh, say that uh, uh, touch is so important that if you leave a baby without touching, baby even might die. Because the touch is so, that brings a lot of information into the mind to stimulate our brain. More than any other sense, the touch, sense of touching is very important. It triggers everything in our mind and body. So therefore it is called a special faculty which has a sense in itself to stimulate our other senses in the body. And that has these four, uh, eight elements. Then the touching is external object, they also have eight elements. So they are, that also goes through those ten stages to complete, to get the fetter. <coughs> then mind element. Mind element is the uh, invisible, most powerful inner uh, sense that uh, is impossible to locate. Uh, we can locate, we can uh, uh, say the brain is the thinking uh, apparatus, think, thinking uh, what you call element. But the sense, what you call mind, is 
almost impossible to locate. Although some people say it is in the heart. <laughs> some people say it is in the brain. Those who believe in the what you call cardiac theory, because they believe uh, biologically when you are conceived in the fourth week our heart beats. The first organ in the body to operate uh, fully well is the heart. That begins to beat in the fourth week of our conception. <laughs> this is what biologists say. And therefore people think that is where our consciousness is. But the cerebral theorists say, no, no, it is the brain which uh, starts in, in eight weeks, four weeks later that has consciousness. Buddhist uh, tradition is saying that you know, Chitta is located in the heart. That is commentary. Commentaries... Com that. Durga, I prefer <laughs> not going into the commentaries uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, especially one reason is confusion. Buddha said the Guhasayang Durangamang ekitarang asarirang guhasayang yechitang sanyamesanti mokkanti marabandhana. He said, Durangamang ekitarang. It travels very fast by itself. Asarirang, it doesn't have a body. Guhasayang, it is inside a cave. Guha is cave. Gufa in, yeah. Guha sayang, durangamang ekatarang asari ranguyang, ye chittang sanyamesanti. If somebody discipline this mind, mokkanti marabandhana, that person liberates from the bondage of mara. <laughs> now, Buddha simply said guha sayang. So these people say guha means uh, there is a cavity inside the heart. So in that mind sits. Uh, it, they give all a kind of explanations. The Buddha said guha means inside this body. It can be anywhere. So consciousness can be at the tip of your finger. <laughs> Consciousness can be at the tip of your toe. It arises right there whenever something happens. When you touch, consciousness arises from the tip of your finger. When you touch, consciousness is there. When you touch with the nose, consciousness is there. <laughs> so, there is no one single place where consciousness is sitting. Consciousness arises so as soon as we have um, nerve endings all over our body, nerves. Entire body structure, every cell is connected with one another through nerves. Consciousness is spread uh, throughout the body, through this nervous system. And therefore, it happens any moment, any time. But we can discipline it. Discipline with our mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. And even we will not feel although the nervous system is all over the body, we even may not feel something happening to the body when mind is concentrated through the discipline. So when we discipline, we can uh, temporarily shut down the system. We can shut down. We may not hear, we may not smell, we may not feel that feeling, 
we may not feel the touch, we may not even feel our existence. So, it is the training that can make all these things happen. So, I would not try to locate the consciousness. Okay, we continue this afternoon.